What's going on, Jeff fans? Welcome to our next episode of Jet Cast Nation. As always, I'm Pat, and that's Ray. It's week five. We got the Broncos coming up, but I want to talk about last week's game uh, before we get into it. Um, Talking about Zach Wilson, I think he had a decent game. Like his, it was his best game since being a, a pro, right? Ray, I mean, what, what do you think? Between that game and Tennessee was right on par. It was very encouraging for somebody who, like myself, is a Zach Wilson denier. I got to see it more than once. I got to see it for at least three games before I say anything. But if we could have hand chosen an opponent to have this week for Zach Wilson, it's going to be the Denver Broncos. Yeah, I said the same thing. I had to see more. Um, it was 105 passer rating. He had over 70% completion rating. So it was clearly the best game he's ever had. And the nice thing I like to see is that he's actually hanging in the pocket, stepping up and, yes. and delivering the ball. You know, you mentioned the Titans game, uh, his rookie year. So what's that, two years ago now? You know, all those big plays and all the, play, all the plays since have been him rolling out of the pocket and making something yeah. Happen. Corey Davis catch, remember exactly. that? Exactly. That was what he was saying. It was a broken was play. For that game. Yep. It was a broken play. <laughs> but now he's sitting in the pocket, he's dropping back, and he's and he's he's hitting his back foot and he's delivering the ball. He's and and right. and he's doing it with confidence. So, you know, I it, it's it's a step in the right direction, but again, yes, I do need to see more. And and the Broncos defense is is atrocious, right? They're they're ranked last in the entire NFL. Right. Well, we one thing the announcers kept going over was how in rhythm this offense is supposed to be. It's supposed to be a mm-hmm. five-step drop, one hitch, and then you hit the target. It seemed like against New England, he was very unsure of where to throw the ball. But I think he accepted, listen, I have some weapons on the outside. Let's let's go through my one-two read. And worst comes source, then we use our legs. We know the Jets drafted Zach Wilson to be one of those mobile quarterbacks not necessarily running the ball but being able to extend the play and one thing we saw last week against the Chiefs was they did the the play action they rolled him out they got him a couple of easy throws and that's one thing I can't stress enough we've talked about this since his rookie year set him up for promise even if it's a two yard out where he just gets completion gets that confidence and we got to we got to talk about the negative and the positive with that game that throw to Lazard down the sideline if it's in stride, it's probably a touchdown, the missed TD throw. But then he had some great throws, that Alan Lazard throw uh, in the end zone. You know, the hitting the tight ends, it, it was a lot of positivity to take out of that. And one thing that a couple of Jeff fans took, which I love to see, you saw Pat Mahomes come up to him at the end of the game mm-hmm. and tell him, buddy, you got all the skill set, yada, yada. And Zach looked effing pissed. Good. Which that's what I love to see. I'm I'm so tired of everybody's great shake hands like we are like we have in baseball. This guy looks like he means business. And you know what? I think it's clicked with him where it's either this is gonna be who he's gonna be, or the Jets are gonna move on. So, you know, it's encouraging. I mean, we can run down the Denver stats right now. Really quickly, I have them pulled up right here. Before you the get Denver, into that, one thing, I, one thing, I, one thing I want to say. Sure. You, you mentioned the the miss touchdown to Garrett, where it was it was just out of his reach. Um, they still scored a touchdown on that drive. Mm-hmm. They still they he still had that beautiful play fake and that throw to Uzama. So he didn't crumble after missing right. that play. He went right back in and they still scored a touchdown. Granted, yeah, it was a you know they still wasted some time on the clock, but I think it was still in the third. It was. No, it wasn't the third quarter. It was the second quarter, and you know it 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 showed to me that he he was able to put in his you know put it in in the uh, the back seat and he was able to continue the drive. So that that was another thing that was promising to me. And you know, yes, he fumbled the ball, and and we can get into you know the the, the defensive holding Penalties. nonsense call, but you know he did end up fumble, fumbling the ball and, and kind of costing the game there. But there, I think there was still enough positive out of that game where, um, you know, if he can if he can and do the same thing against Denver tomorrow, um, I'm going to start turning on him in a positive way. I, I think it, it. You have to look at this year. You have to look at this year as as a reset almost. You know, if if he starts playing well, you have to look at it as a reset in that. The floor. Those two years being a rookie offensive coordinator, I don't think he really knew what he was doing. And I think we can all agree that he didn't know what he was doing. Clearly, he got let go. He's got an actual offensive coordinator now that seems to know how to 
develop a quarterback. He did it with Blake Bortles in, I, I forget what year it was, when they went to the uh, yeah, AFC Championship. In Jacksonville. Champion. Yes, yep. in, in Jacksonville. I yep. mean, he got the most out of Blake Bortles. I mean, you tell me he can't get the most out of Zach Wilson? Now, it's possible to me that the Dallas and the Patriots game, they were they wanted to kind of maybe take it out of his hands a little bit, you know? Um the handcuffs. Trim, a lot of people talk trim about down the op, trim down the offense so that because they're too afraid of him making a mistake, and I, I can only mm-hmm. hope that maybe Hackett went to Sal and said, "Look, we, we got to take the training wheels off. This kid's not going to go anywhere unless we actually take the training wheels off and let him play the way he knows how to play the, play football." Maybe it gave him a little bit of boost of a confidence where it's like, listen, you know when you're a kid and, like you're, we and trust your, dad's, you. beh- right. your we- dad's behind you in baseball, you know, elbow up, uh, swing through, see the ball, yada, and now you start thinking about all those right. things instead of just naturally reacting. And I just want to see them continue to open up this playbook. You notice he may, he emphasized getting Garrett Wilson involved in the game plan. Even though mm-hmm. he forced it to him a little bit, he's the kind of player, if you're going to force it to anybody on the team, I want it to be him because at any second, as we all know, he can make a, a five-yard in slant like Odell Beckham used to and take it to the house like he did a couple weeks ago. So, you know, it, it's really positive. It's not just now him. We, we, I mean, we got Ruckert involved. Yes. We got we, Which is we got Uzama time, right? involved. I mean, this is it, it. I think Hackett took the handcuffs off, and mm-hmm. the playbook is opening up. And we're using the tight ends. We're using these the the screens. We're using the running backs out of the backfield. You know, it's no more. It's no more uh, of this vanilla offense. So that's what I really think is is happening here. You know, they probably got that shock. You know, when Aaron Rodgers went down and they thought, okay, we have to condense this down and not trusting Zach to be able to, to make the plays. And, and like you said, if, if you're on the field and you know you have the trust of the coaches, you know, you're, you're going you're gonna to play better, I, I, I think. Right. Um, and I, Pat, if we're being honest with ourselves, these next two out of three games are a must win. You have to beat Denver. And let's call a spade a spade. The Giants look horrible. Yeah. Their defense is horrible. You are playing two bottom five defenses outside of Dexter Lawrence with the with with uh, the Giants after playing one... top teams after playing Buffalo, Dallas, right, and and the Chiefs. Now you're starting to, to too get too far ahead of ourselves. Yeah. But the Eagles are not a juggernaut. They almost lost. They should have lost to Washington if Riverboat Ron Rivera did not go for. You know the the tie. We as as it happened, I said you got to go for the win here. You came back, you score the tying touchdown on mm-hmm. uh, the last play. You got to take momentum. So uh, listen, I'm not going to say we're going to beat Philly, but I want to see what we could do against Denver. Let's get into the numbers really quick as as we're starting to break down Denver. Their defense, thirty second in points allowed, thirty second in yards allowed, thirty mm. second in points per play allowed. 32nd in yards per play, 31st in opponent's red zone efficiency. They're allowing just under 82% touchdowns. And then opponent touchdowns per game, dead last in the NFL at five. And I know a lot of that came from Miami, but they got their asses waxed last week too. So, you know, I think they gave up a thousand yards the last two weeks. I know, I know like almost 700 or 700 of it was to Miami. The facts are the facts. Russell Wilson is not the Russell Wilson from Seattle. Their offense, you know, they have some receivers. And we could talk about the Jets and their injuries now that we know Eccles and Reed are out. I don't care. I don't want to hear the excuses. This front four has to get to Russell Wilson. I expect them to run the ball, run the ball heavy, use that play action. And I think we should, in all honesty, and I, 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 you know, I'm very honest. I picked the Jets to lose the last two weeks. I think we need to blow Denver out. Yeah. I don't think this should be a close game. I think we are clearly better. Our defense needs to feast, and the offense needs to show up. And it, it shouldn't even be close in my mind. And and I want it to be a revenge game for Hackett. <laughs> and Brees Hall. And Brees Hall and AVT. But Hackett in particular, because if you want to talk bulletin board stuff, what, what Sean Payton said about Hackett's coaching job. 100%. Oh, like, if you, you're just setting yourself up to be plastered on every wall in every meeting room, and 
I think I I think it's gonna be. I think we're gonna I wonder score if Rogers 30, is but... traveling with the team. Have you heard anything about that? Because it almost is like. I'm not saying he know. did anything for Zach, but maybe meeting with Zach prior to the game calmed those nerves a little bit because it he could've. looked confident it coming out the bat. This last game was not on Zach. No matter how much we criticize him, mm-hmm. we were down 17 nothing in the first. Mm-hmm. And we should have won the game mm-hmm. against Patrick Mahomes. Zach Wilson outplayed Patrick Mahomes. There is no if, ands, or buts about it. The fact that Jermaine Johnson didn't get that holding call on the final play on third and 23. That was the game right there. Mm-hmm. And we all know refs play favorites. Let's be let's be real. But until Zach Wilson earns that, I mean, we haven't got a roughing the passer call, what, in almost two years? Something like that, yeah. I mean, it's something like that. I saw a crazy stat the other day. But this defensive line, we keep hearing how great they are. I want to see Will McDonald get involved in the in the defense. And Bryce Huff, out of all the players, small little Bryce Huff, is getting over 30% of the snaps, which I love to see. Well, Bryce Huff has been has <clears throat> Bryce Huff has been fantastic. Pay him now. Exactly. Do not let him go to free agency, Douglas. Don't make that mistake. What about the offensive line? Like there it seems like they finally have that front five solidified. Um, and, and Tittman is playing out of his freaking mind. ABC's he's, permanent right tackle. They said it. But fine. That's fine. He's, he's honestly, he's grading out better as a tackle than he did as a guard. Mm-hmm. And Tittman is grading out better as a guard than he would have ever graded out at center. Uh, it helps when you have all pros and when you have an all pro to your right. <laughs> look, <laughs> I tweeted that. <laughs> I, I tweeted this out, um, earlier today where I said, you know, if Becton pans out, right, which... He seems to be playing pretty well. And Tittman keeps it up. Top-rated um, rookie offensive lineman. Guard, I think. And AVT is dominating at right tackle. I mean, how can you how can you not change your opinion about Joe Douglas's ability to draft the offensive line? I know... It's all I know, about Zach. Let's be real. Right, but, but the line is doing right. their job, finally. Yeah, you're talking three draft picks, three high draft picks, and they all potentially could be hits, which... Over hate... four years, over is the potential that over four <laughs> years, he's drafted three top offensive linemen that are starting? I mean, Pat, the, 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 argu- the Mekhi... argument that he doesn't know how to fix an offensive line could go out the window pretty quick. Makai Becton... If he doesn't get hurt, which you can't project injuries in the NFL. If, if yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't get, get, get rolled over. The guy was over. on his way to be an all was a potential yeah. all pro talent as a rookie. He only didn't get it probably because he's a rookie. The guy, he was a, a high, one of the highest rated ta- left tackles in the game. They were saying that he should have gone before Thomas to the Giants at six. Let's keep it real. Everybody's destroying Douglas for that pick. You can't project injury. The guy was an injury injury ridden in college at Louisville. It just happened. And the amount of weight, it. the amount of weight that he's lost to put himself in the position he's in this year, is only going to help prevent those knee injuries. It it it, it it's it's math. <laughs> you weigh less, you're going to put less strain on your knees. So right. I think I think we finally have an offensive line group that is starting to gel. Did and, you see those passing grades over the last three weeks? I don't quote me on it, but it was like. Our, our pass protection win rate, three weeks ago, it was like 39%. Mm-hmm. Last week, it was like 48%. And that the week before last week was 48%. Last week, it was like 68%. So you could clearly see them gelling. And I also think, right. let's be real. Let's call a spade a spade. I love saying that. Zach Wilson decisively knowing where he's going pre-snap and reading a defense. Makes like everything last better. week was all... He was getting, if you watch in the New England game, he was getting five, six, seven seconds to throw the ball and then taking a sack. And you look and it's like, oh, this person allowed a hurry or a sack. It, it was just overblown. I look at what Tua He's getting Tuna the ball Viola, out quick. They get, he's getting the right, ball out quick and on Tuna time. Tuna that's what matters. Viola does with the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. It's quick in rhythm where you don't give the other team uh, an opportunity right to get at you and that's about our outside receivers winning the one-on-one battle and zach trusting that we saw against the patriots uh garrett wilson was getting one-on-one on the outside consistently but zach i don't think had that confidence to just throw it up to him and mm. we saw it last week and it worked last week and 
I know it was one week. We saw it in Pittsburgh last year, so I want to temper my expectations. But if he could light it up, which he, it's almost like he has to light it up this week. Denver, is, I can't explain to you how awful he was. You remember Salah's first year with Ulbrick, how awful our defense was? Yeah. That's the Denver defense. There's yeah. no exception not to score. And I want to, I want to put this to bed. We better score in the first quarter of this game. We're one of two teams in the NFL that hasn't scored yet in the first quarter, which is abysmal. Against right. this defense that's coming up, we must score and put that to bed. Um, it, going along with that, uh, the the pitch counter, the governor on Brees Hall has been removed. Um, I just yesterday I finished watching the um, that documentary that one Jets drive did. I thought it was fantastic. Um, if if he if, if that's true and the and and the pitch count is off on him and. I, I, I expect nothing. I, I expect another sixty-yard touchdown run, just like he did last year. Um, I'm very, exci- I'm very excited. Especially if the line Brees keeps blocking the way it is. Yes, I'm very. I excited totally for agree Brees. with you. Yep. It seems like every week he's got one of those breakout runs, and all these Jeff fans are like, "Oh, right. look, he's running out of gas." Yada, well, of course yada. he like, is. Give him, a, uh, give him a, give him a few weeks. Uh, my gosh, you know what? One thing I will say though, <clears throat> I want to see. I mean, Dalvin Cook's just, to me, he, he doesn't show the burst, but I want to give him a couple more weeks. Supposedly, mm-hmm. he's getting better week by week by week. Well, he's also coming but, off a of surgery. Remember right, that. I, so there's conditioning to go along with that, too. I, and I he, and see, he was out involved, most, man. Right, but Cook was also out most of training camp as a free agent looking for a job. So I think between right. that and a surgery, there's conditioning there that you need to take into account. And But yes, I would like to see Izzy get, get more involved. I would like Izzy, to see... Izzy, I can't explain to you. If you if you did your pre-draft homework and your post-draft homework, like we, we've told you, I can't explain to you how shifty and how explosive Izzy as a running back. There were rumors that he was running 4 forties. That's how fast this kid is but I think, in the open field. Sorry, I, I think they have Michael Carter over the top of him for two reasons. One, catching the ball out of the backfield, and two, picking up blitzes. Michael he's Carter, the only one that could do it. He's the only one that can do it. Brees can do it too. I Obviously, they probably kept him out of those passing downs just because they didn't want to put stress on him. But between... Obviously, our offensive line gelling, Ruckert being in and helping with with the blocking, and Michael Carter helping with the pass blocking. You're talking about a cohesive system here that Zach is finally able to uh, grow under. And yes, Ruckert's going to be a star. I'm telling you, mark my words. He he's up until this week he was known as the blocking tight end. Now he's going up and making circus circus back shoulder catches. Please. He reminds me of so much with a serviceable quarterback of Hawkinson with uh with the Vikings. Mm-hmm. A guy who was kind of I believe he was actually cut prior to going there, but ends up turning out to be a stud because they're both they're not the quickest, but they're both elite blockers. So when they're in the game, the other defenses are forced to go heavy, and there's not many middle linebackers or heavier linebackers or bigger safeties that are going to be able to cover. Rucker, Rucker is in an absolute. Elite Not everybody has Quincy Williams. <laughs> and even, you know what's funny? I killed Quincy Williams for years, and I got to give him credit. Mm-hmm. Even after being one of those players that pump, took a few years and just had to come, had to come, uh, <laughs> ha, ha, took a few years, had to mature, and yep. he's. He's grading out as one of keep the best. Keep Sherwood off the field. I'm good with Sherwood. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll, let's keep it real. Yep, he, he was one of the big reasons for a couple of those explosive plays with the Chiefs. I think he's just—it's really fast for him right now. I prefer the Jets to play big, play three safeties. Tony Adams is back this week. That is big. I could see, you know, Bryce, Bryce Hall scares me on the outside, but I will say this: let's—if we're calling a spade a spade, Bryce Hall when he was starting, he always seemed to be right there with the mm-hmm. corner. You never saw him getting completely burnt, but this is his time to shine. I think they're going to leave Sauce on an island by himself, maybe shade coverage, and maybe we might see a little bit more man coverage maybe. in this game. So, Keep MC2 in the, in, uh, as your slot corner. Yeah, he's not going anywhere. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for this game, man. Must yeah, win. Must yeah, win. No, I don't want to hear. It's nice that's at 4 o'clock, too. That. It's nice that's, if, uh, that's actually at 4 o'clock, too. You get to uh, enjoy a little bit of uh, uh, the 1 o'clock games. You're not, like, right into it. But... Um, yeah, uh, it, 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 it's got to be a blowout. 
Um, it doesn't have to be a blowout. Let's, let's win the game first. I'll be happy if it's a blowout. If Zach goes out there and plays the way he did against the Chiefs, there's no reason why we shouldn't lose this game. My gosh, I can't explain to you how bad Denver this game. is. Denver's one of the... You know what's funny? I hope we go in there and I hope Hackett kicks the hell out of Sean Payton. And then I want to hear, you know... Hackett's the coach. He's not responsible for personnel like Joe Douglas is with us. Mm-hmm. And now you're seeing how bad the personnel is. And Sean Payton's trying to blame Hackett for the personnel there. I mean, they traded for Did Russell Did Payton Wilson. take over everything? Is he, is, oh, he, is, he, is, he, is he like the parcels I don't know he's where he's... Full, I'm not sure. But no. all I know is he's bitching and moaning about Hackett and what Hackett did. Hackett was just a head coach. Hackett was no more than a head I'm not even saying he's a good head coach. But let's not make it out like he's co-tight. Okay? Right. Right. I think I honestly I think he's one of those guys that um is a better coordinator than he is it is a head coach. You know, there's, right. there's a lot of guys out there where that are just better at being a coordinator um than it is being a head coach because um you know go if going from, you know, calling plays on an offense to being having to take over everything, you know, that, that that's a big job and not everybody's cut out for it. Um right. But yeah, I want to see. I want to see more tight ends. I want to see uh, more tight end usage. I want to see Brees Hall uh, break a big run, and I want a Garrett Wilson TD. That's what I want. Um, and it I just should... want to win. Yeah, <laughs> that's all that matters. You're one in four years. I want to win, and I want no injuries. That's what I want. Yep. And you know, we went there last year, so you know the team is is everybody talks about going to Denver and and the thin air up there. You know, we went there last year. We won a game. The team should be used to it. Um, and I just hope that we're sitting here on, I don't know, Monday, Tuesday, whenever we do our next, uh, Sunday post next... game show on Twitter. If you're not following, that's us, right. Follow well, us not just Twitter. post game, you got the half game too. So we got the half time, we got the half time yep. space, got the post game space. And then, uh, you and I will meet back up Monday, Tuesday, whatever it is, and give us, uh, give, uh, uh, our recap on the game. Hopefully we're talking about a big win and, and going into the Eagles, uh, possibly come out of the six game stretch, Three and three, which I don't think I would have been saying. Uh, so we called on for. Uh, remember, even but, with Aaron, even before Rod, even before uh, yeah, Rogers even before hurt, that, if three and three, if we got out of this stretch three and three, and then I feel like it was all downhill from here. Even even two and four, I'll be okay with, as long as Zach shows the progression and the, the Giants. The Giants are awful. That's a must-win game. Well, that'll be our seventh game. That's outside of the sixth game. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So yeah, I'm talking about the first six. If we if even if we go two and four, I'm okay with it as long as three Zach is showing. <laughs> three long, and four. Three and four. Three yeah. four. As long as Zach is showing, um, uh, uh, the the growth, I'll be I'll be okay with it. So totally agree. any last uh, any last words? Better win. Better this is win. The season today. You lose. You lose Sunday. Pretty much. You know. Like most jet seasons, and I hate to say that, Halloween, yeah. you'll be going out with the kids and not caring about Sunday coming up. I hope not. All right, so we'll talk to you guys soon. And uh, hope, like I said, hopefully we're talking about a Jets win come Monday, Tuesday. Go Jets. Go Jets.